What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So we're gonna check out 10 worst extreme rule pay-per-view matches ever. Now, extreme rules is this Saturday, man. And for the first time in many, many years, I can say I'm actually looking forward to extreme rules this year. That's that's a crazy thing to say because most of the time when we see an extreme rules pay-per-view it's far from extremes but i do feel like this year triple h is trying to add some fun stipulations that at least give it some of the that at least kind of somewhat makes sense for it to be a called extreme rules so i'm looking forward to this pay-per-view but we're gonna check out some of the horrible ones that were just not extreme even in the slightest so we're gonna check this out Appreciate all the love and support, man. This should be a good one, and let's get right into this, man. Have you ever noticed that for the longest time in WWE, Extreme Rules hasn't been very extreme? Like, the main event will be contested in Extreme Rules, which means anything goes except pinfalls must happen in the ring, apparently, so I guess the match has some rules. But then the rest of the pay-per-view will just have normal matches contested under normal rules. Look, yeah. what I'm trying to say is that after a few years, this is one of those pay-per-views that feels like it's more of an annoyance for WWE to actually break around rules. than a show that could and should be a hardcore variety show. A bunch of silly different steps for a one-night-only special gala feel and not a Demon King flopping on the floor like an electrocuted oh, salmon and falling on his gosh. tits after some unsatisfactory ring maintenance under the triple h era things are looking exceedingly promising for extreme rules bailey for champion pretty please and next week we'll cover the best matches but for now let's have a quick look back at some of the worst that extreme rules ever chucked up on our shoes oh I'm boy this should be a good one and here are the 10 worst extreme rules matches ever and while you're here please like and subscribe we've done a load of lists with a bunch of hey this is the best matches and these are the worst ones we've done that with elimination chamber Hell in a Cell, WrestleMania, give it a, give it a watch. What else are you going to do? <laughs> Nothing, that's what. Number 10, Seth Rollins versus Dolph Ziggler 2018. Way to start off with a match that was entirely not the fault of those in the ring. F*** us for wanting the IC title to main event a show, I guess. If you were to put a pair of lads on a pay-per-view and say, go a half hour and tear the house down, Seth Rollins and Dolph Ziggler would be a solid choice for those mm -hmm. two. See the end of 2014 Survivor Series. Great. After all. But because this is extreme rules, where just tearing the house down is not extreme enough, this was a 30-minute Iron Man match. Not only has WWE had a little difficulty working out good ways of booking their Iron Man matches for the last decade plus, but this match also included every WWE fan's favorite thing, apparently counting but whereas fans counting down is a benefit you know in the royal rumble in an iron man match where dudes are just trying to wrestle a fucking match it's not in fact beneficial to count down and make a buzzer sound every time 60 seconds pass then they took the timer mm, away yeah, and the fans booed because someone took their toy away the expensive toy they were smashing against the ground like fucking toddlers. Number <laughs> nine, tag team turmoil, extreme rules 2010. I don't know why they were doing that. Like you just leave the timer up for people to see the whole 30 minutes and then the the, the pinfall counter. That that's all you really need. WWE had a real problem with their tag division in 2010. A problem they felt the need to accentuate by beating the entire division in one match, thanks to their love of tag team turmoil matches. Extreme rules 2010 exposed WWE's lack of tag depth in a big way. Keep in mind, this was still one month before the debut of the Usos. So this Damn. tag division consisted of John Morrison and my personal favorite wrestler ever, R-Truth, Mark <laughs> Henry and MVP, don't they go together like chalk and cheese, the Hart Dynasty, and the reigning unified tag team champions and ludicrously named Show Miz. Show this Miz. match was an impromptu tag that. team turmoil match as well, with the Miz egging on Teddy Long to just keep adding tag teams, this tag team match player, and Show Miz dispatched truth and wisdom in just three minutes and 13 seconds, which is somehow less time than their WrestleMania opener, before beating MVP and Henry in less than two minutes and losing to the Hart Dynasty in 11 seconds. The Hart Dynasty would win the tag titles the next night on Raw and Showmiz would go their separate ways, but not before contributing to this damning display of apathetic tag team booking. <coughs> yeah, Number eight, Cody Rhodes versus The Big Show 2012. <laughs> you know what? This one is a bit of fun. Kind of. Big Show's run as Intercontinental Champion was a short one and a bit naff, winning the title from Cody Rhodes at WrestleMania 28, so it is appropriate that the match in which he lost the title was also short and a bit naff 
and a bit of a whoopsie poopsie. At Extreme Rules 2012, Cody and Tall Paul took part Tall in a tables Paul. match for the IC title, and depending on who you talk to, this either had the best or worst finish to a tables match in history. After four minutes of nothing much, Big Show went to step over the top rope, only for Cody to drop kick his foot backwards, resulting in Biggles losing his balance. I and remember just stepping that. through a table at ringside. With a rare bit of brilliant camera work from WWE capturing his reaction, which can only be described as that trombone noise from the prices <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I remember he stepped through the damn table, and that's how he fucking lost. You just like. Okay. <laughs> It is very funny, but also a bit of a wet fart in terms of a yeah. tables match. Sort of like a, well, we have to do this finish at least once, probably. So let's just do it just to say that we have <laughs> anything that's, you know, wow. good. Number seven, John Cena versus The Big Show Extreme Rules 2009. Big, show's, a lot of the big show's match with Cody Rhodes was fun and or last. His 200th match in the worst destined to do this forever rivalry ever between him and John Cena was no fun and even less laughs after the pair wrestled at Judgment Day 2009 where the story of the match was that Big Show was too big of a show for Cena to mm -hmm. put in the STF. They ran back that classic at Extreme Rules 2009 in a submission match. You know what the one exciting part of these Cena Big Show matches was? The bit where Cena wins with the AA because the Big Show is big and yeah. even though they rerun that shit more than the Simpsons, it's fun to see Strong Boy lift Big Boy. So by slapping a submission match stipulation on it, they effectively killed the excitement that comes with the impressive feat because there was no pinfalls submission matches are usually more boring than standard mm -hmm. matches to begin with and cena and big show aren't exactly the technicians you would need to make the stipulation exciting also they went 19 minutes <laughs> how fucking dare you number six the eye for an eye match 2020 oh this was awful bro oh my god this was so fucking awful this this had Vince McMahon written all over it. It makes no sense to me how you have an eye for an eye match. Like you're literally about to gouge out a human person's eye on television. Oh my oh my just in the fake eye they had Ray use. Oh my and then Fucking Seth throwing up from seeing it. You're the one that did it. Why are you throwing up? If it isn't my old friend from the stupidest one. Oh off my wrestling God, it's list. Go and watch that list stupid. You it. You'll like it. The eye for an eye match is difficult to place because as people have rightly pointed out, the work involved in the match is very good. It's no. like Seth Rollins and Rey Mysterio. Good How wrestlers, great good? wrestlers. We see the problem comes from not being able to suspend your disbelief for even a second because what sort of sanctioned sport is won by checks notes? Optic surgery. Yeah. Watching famous good guy Rey Mysterio struggle to impale Seth Rollins' eye with a broken kendo stick, perhaps in an effort to pull it out like an olive on a toothpick. It's, it's just too much, man. And that's before Rey holds a CGI gumball to his head while Seth vomits everywhere. Again, the work involved keeps this match from being closer to the very end of the garbage <laughs> spectrum. It will go down from <laughs> the dumbest and most desperate ideas WWE ever had. Number Awful. five, the Ambrose Asylum 2016. Oh, it is a wonder how is. WWE continually messed up the concept of a steel cage match. Put them in a box and let them fight. Stop running away. Just fight much less how they managed to mess up the concept of one with yeah. weapons all over the ambrose asylum match was the culmination of chris jericho and dean ambrose's 2016 rivalry one everyone tried to forget about before they were stabbing each other in the eye in AEW years later mm -hmm. why was it bad because someone decided this blow-off match to establish dean's brutality he wasn't really brutal by that point i mean even so they named the match after him it was, it was supposed to be his coming out party yeah before he, he wins the wwe championship it Are you sure awful. it's time for yuck yucks? Was, Every time Jericho would grab good. a weapon, Ambrose would grab a comedy prop. Ambrose swung nunchucks around like your nine-year-old cousin with a Wii remote. <sighs> to be fair, there was a thumbtack spot, which Jericho took like a champ. champ That's yeah. very weird after all that. Ha ha. This could have been a great way to finally propel Ambrose yeah, to the WWE Championship part win a month uh, later. But instead, it was a perfect representation of the goofball antics WWE projected onto dear old Dean. Number four, the hog pen match, 2009. Mm -mm. Fuck off. Just <laughs> off, though. Sometimes something on pay-per-view doesn't end up being pay-per-view worthy for one reason or another. But usually, it isn't worth getting worked up over. The hog pen match between Santino, <sighs> Morella in a dress, 
Vicky and Chavo Guerrero. It just hurts my feelings by existing. This match did not have one single shred of hope of being good, and yet WWE brass still made the choice to make people this pay it to see it at Extreme Rules 2009. Honor, I'm not good enough at maths to work out how much money people <clears throat> paid per second of this two minute, 43 second slot. Just first. awful. But wherever the answer is, it's too much. What more can you say? It was bad on a legendary level. Vicky Guerrero is a pig, says WWE. Yeah. Roll in the mud, pig. Oink. Santino Morella isn't a woman like we know what a woman is. Yeah. This is WWE. This, this Roll is in this, the mud, pig. This is awful. Pig, pig. Cringe. Number three, awful. Jim Ross and Jerry Lawler versus Jack Swagger and Michael Cole 2011. I think there I remember this. There are people who call Vince McMahon the greatest wrestling promoter of all time, and he certainly is the most successful but he's also the same dude who watched jerry lawler and michael cole's all-time wrestlemania stinker and said let's mm -hmm. do it two more times so who's to say who's a genius and this WWE is where michael a cole was on barrel he was just on barrel on commentary despite that working approximately 0.1 percent of the time and mind you that does come with a 0.1 percent margin of error at extreme rules 2011 we got chapter two of michael cole related misery as he teamed up with wrestlemania trainer jack swagger well, to face jerry lawler and jim ross in a country whipping match <laughs> they whipped each other michael cole was wrapped in bubble wrap Jim Ross was embarrassed again. It was just a miserable time in the middle of a feud that fans had been done with even yeah. before the computer ruined WrestleMania. Yeah. Number two, the Swamp Fight 2020. Boneyard match, great fun. Mm -hmm. Firefly Fan House, perfect storytelling. The Swamp mm -hmm. Fight at the Horror Show at Extreme Rules. Did not you work. broke it. Yeah, no it more didn't cinematic work. matches. This is why we can't have nice things. Back to Winnipeg. Braun Strowman and Bray Wyatt's 2020 rivalry was really quite surprisingly bad. It really doesn't feel like it should have been. Mm -hmm. It didn't help. This was the he, he spot on. That should have been really good because of their history, but it it fell pretty flat. Universal title program right before Roman Reigns returned. No wonder we were excited to see him. After the B-movie camp of the Boneyard and the art house meta of the Fun House was a swamp fight. WWE's attempt at actual horror. Because if it was... You did it wrong. <laughs> Braun showed up at the old Wyatt family swamp where he was confronted by an evil version of himself as if Luke had just wandered through the trees <laughs> of Dagobah. He got tied up and interrogated by cult leader Bray before a fight eventually broke out and Braun was dragged down to the depths of the swamp where he presumably drowned yeah. Yeah. and the fiend then appeared. I, mean, I it, Look, even the fun house had a fucking pinfall in it. So you knew yeah. when it was over and who won. Also, there was a projection of Alexa Bliss because she and Braun were in a mixed tag team two years earlier. I don't <laughs> fucking know. But speaking of Alexa, number one, Bailey versus Alexa Bliss oh 2017. Oh, my God. It takes a special kind of effort to systematically ruin every potential top babyface handed to you from NXT. But there is yet to be a more damaging match to the run of a called up NXT babyface than Bailey's match with Alexa Bliss at Extreme Rules 2017. You know, the one where they made Bailey afraid of a kendo stick. There could have been a great I story think I here of Bailey this. not wanting to resort to using a weapon to get her win and fighting valiantly through the pain of her opponent not beholding to the same moral standards. But no, Bailey was afraid of the stick like she was holding a fucking snake. <laughs> this kendo stick on a pole match killed any hope Bailey had of regaining the love and respect that made her one of the best champions uh... NXT ever had. The fans turned on her real hard after this. And just in terms of sheer damage, it takes a top spot as the worst match in Extreme Rules history. Just this kiss my ass. And that's our <laughs> list. What's your And you know what's extreme? crazy about that, man? Ever since she's wind heel, she's uh she's one of the better better women like talent right now. Like people want to see more of Bailey in her heel gimmick. Her being a heel was the best thing that happened to her and revitalized her career, in my opinion, and a lot of people's opinion in WWE. Because they, they just mishandled her. When she came from NXT, she had a lot of hype and a lot of buzz, but they mishandled her. They did. They really mishandled her. So I'm glad she's back on track on what she got going on now. And she could potentially be the new Raw Women's Champion in uh, in a few days' time. So we will see. But comment down below. Let me know what's the worst pay-per-view match from Extreme Rules you've ever seen. Was it on this list? Was it something not on this list? Let me know. For me, I'm still going to have to go up there with the eye for eye match. The match itself was good the story for it was good it's just the fucking premise of it like it's just an eye for an eye match I, you t you take me out of believing whatever i'm about to see right now doesn't matter how good of a match they're gonna put on you're telling me 
I gotta watch someone gouge out someone else's eye for it to for it to, to match the end. What the? I'm not a little kid. <laughs> We're grown adults. Like I'm granted, kids watch this show, watch the product. But come on, it's the internet. We know that's not happening. Like what the? No, that that really, boy, that was god awful, man. But I appreciate all love and support. Road to 100K. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. See y'all next time.